Prime Minister Narendra Modi as a special invitee, collectively interacted with all European Union member states, and it is the first time when an Indian Prime Minister participated in a meeting for the European Council. Now, the economy between the Prime Minister Modi and European Union leaders was on complete display. The host of the meeting, Portuguese Prime Minister Antonio Costa, in the presence of all EU leaders, proudly referred to his status as an overseas citizen of India. The Belgian Prime Minister, Alexander de Croo, greeted Prime Minister Modi in his native language, Gujarati, and said Kem Cho. Uh, supporting India, French President Emmanuel Macron said that India does not need to listen to lectures from anyone about vaccine supplies. Lauding India's efforts, Macron added, that India has exported a lot for humanity to many countries. The Spanish Prime Minister warmly recalled Indian assistance last year during the worst time for Spain. All leaders present in the meet thanked India for medical supplies in the first wave of the pandemic. They also expressed solidarity and assured all support to India as the nation battles a second wave of coronavirus. In the meeting, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi urged European Union leaders to support the waiver of patent protections for COVID-19 vaccines. The United States' support for the COVID-19 vaccine patent waiver has boosted support from across the world. Several world leaders are supporting a waiver. But the move has left Europe's big two divided. While Emmanuel Macron has supported the move, the French president believes that a patent waiver is not the most critical issue. He says it is the distribution of doses that is the main problem. Germany, on the other hand, has strongly opposed the move. Chancellor Angela Merkel's office said that the protection of intellectual property is the source of innovation and must remain so in the future. However, the country stands ready to hold talks. Meanwhile, the United Nations Secretary General has welcomed the United States government's support for the waiver of intellectual property protections on COVID-19 vaccines. According to the UN, the move could also help to increase the supply of COVAX facility pharmaceutical giants like Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and AstraZeneca have not made a comment. However, they have been opposing the move. Companies argue that patent waiver is a simple but incorrect answer to a complex problem that requires practical solutions. I think it is very important we should, uh, be, we should be open to this discussion. We should also, for example, have a close look at the role of licensing. It is an important, these are important topics to discuss, but we should be aware of the fact that these are topics for the long term. It's not a topic for the short term or the medium term. And we should therefore not lose sight of the main urgencies now which is ramping up indeed the vaccine production as quickly as possible and ensuring that they are fairly and evenly distributed. So um, there are three topics that should be talk tackled with a discussion about TRIPS waiver or licensing. And this is first of all export. The European Union is the pharmacy of the world and open to the world. Up to today, in the European Union, 400 million doses of vaccines have been produced, and 50% of them, 200 million doses, have been exported to 90 different countries in the world. So we invite others to do the same. This is the best way, right now, in the short term, to approach the bottlenecks and uh, the lack of vaccines worldwide. The second point, indeed, is that we have uh, to support COVAX. We have massively financed COVAX. Now, for more on this, we are being joined by our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sudan Sibyl. Sudan, it's great to speak to you. Now, let's start with uh, all the leaders uh, thanking India for the medical supplies in the first wave of the pandemic. They also expressed solidarity and assured all support to India during the second wave. What are some of the promises of support to India now? Well, Alison, last uh, two hours have been pretty hectic in terms of uh, uh, diplomatic developments. Uh, the India-EU 
27 leaders coming together is for the first time that this kind of format has happened uh, and of course uh, it's for the second time that uh, all 27 leaders were present with a single uh, world leader from a different country the last time it happened was uh, uh, in the month of march with the us president joe biden so uh, india being accorded a, a rare honor and also the focus being on a covid crisis how india and the european union can together fight this scourge uh, we know that india is battling the second wave of the pandemic which of course uh, is something uh, very devastating here in India and for that European Union has not only extended solidarity which we saw at uh, the uh, virtual summit but also extended supplies we know 16 countries in fact more than 16 countries even as we speak have reached out to India with supplies with oxygen generators with uh, oxygen concentrators with cylinders uh, so that it can help uh, India and we know that, that they have uh, uh, announced uh, monetary support as well but by and large this was an occasion where uh, the leaders the 27 leaders of the european union can physically in a sense express their gratitude to india as well because remember uh, that uh, just before the second wave for last one year india has been reaching out to the world and europe is no different european union is no different india provided paracetamol india provided xcq to european countries because remember that while India is facing the devastation uh, today, uh, even as we speak, uh, Europe went through the same kind of devastation last year, particularly in the winter period. And that time, India was reaching out. So th this was an occasion where world leaders, uh, uh, the European uh, leaders, uh, in a sense, expressed gratitude. In fact, we know that French President Macron, uh, uh, the Spanish Prime Minister, uh, were particularly emphasizing and warmly regarded and remembered this. So uh, an occasion to recall that, but also the big focus was on the uh, the talks when it comes to uh, the waiver on COVID vaccines, uh, the patent uh, uh, waiver. And we know that after uh, the United States extended its support to the waiver, it's like a domino now. There are more conversations happening. EU is the next big block which uh, uh, could announce support. It, uh, the, the, the leadership there today uh, in the press has said that they are uh, willing to have conversation on this. Mm. Sudan, of course, COVID, the big focus. But what are some of the other big ticket items on the agenda during this meet? We did expect to hear talks about climate change and uh, trade and investment. Well, I think the biggest uh, outcome of uh, the, the meeting which happened is the resumption of talks on the FTA, the FTA between India and the European Union. It is now finally, uh, uh, it will be, there will be talks on it after a gap of eight years. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, just a short while ago, not only the Europeans did their press briefer, there was a briefer by the Ministry of External Affairs, where Secretary West Vikas Farooq talked about this being the biggest outcome of uh, this summit because uh, a pact between India and European Union is a win-win for both uh, for both the bloc and for India, but also there were conversation on climate change, on WTO and other related issues as well. And there will be more conversations in the in the future as well. And specifically, the po uh, focus was also on Indo-Pacific. India is, of course, a strong supporter of the Indo-Pacific vision. And we know that uh, European Union came out with its own guidance. In fact, one question was asked by Vion uh, to the European leadership on Indo-Pacific, in which uh, they expressed confidence not only on the vision, but on more cooperation with India when it comes to uh, the Indo-Pacific region. Right. Talk to me about the trade agreement that has uh, been discussed and the intention to move towards free trade uh, in the future. This is, of course, important in terms of the geographical indications. Well, well, yes, uh, th that is important in terms of engagement, in terms of a post-Brexit uh, Europe as well. Remember the, the conversation with Europe today comes just days after India had conversations with Britain. We know that India, uh, UK summit, the Indian Prime Minister and the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson had their own virtual summit uh, just earlier this uh, uh, week in which the focus was uh, on trade relationship, uh, on uh, the, the Indian businesses investing there in UK. So obviously the EU is also keen uh, to have a, a trade uh, cooperation with India. And uh, we know that Indo-Pacific, if you look at the region, there are two major economies 
against India and China, uh, and EU has publicly said that their uh, their natural alliance with, is with New Delhi, given that they share same uh, same relationship in terms of democracy, in terms of uh, of transparency, and that is something that has been highlighted many times, whether it's today at the summit, whether in the past as well. So this is something that brings uh, Brussels and New Delhi closer. While even though Beijing is a major economy they, uh, in the region, uh, when it comes to Beijing, perhaps the EU is not keen in terms of uh, uh, the shared values uh, it can easily share with New Delhi. So Dan, thank you very much for bringing us all the latest out of that meeting. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.